It's Friday, April the 10th, 2014. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and this is episode number 29 of TEN, Transport Evolved News for the week beginning April 7th, 2014. General Motors gave a massive boost to its electric car program this week, with the news that it was investing $449 million in two of the factories it uses in the manufacture of its Chevrolet Volt extended range electric car. While the majority of the promised funds will go into plant upgrades, new equipment and hiring 1,400 new workers to start a second shift at the Detroit Humtrack facility where the plug-in Volt, Opel Ampera and Cadillac ELR are made, an estimated $65 million will go to GM's Brownstone lithium-ion battery facility where GM makes the lithium-ion battery packs used in all of GM's range extended EVs. At this stage, GM is keeping its future plans close to its corporate chest, but the automaker has confirmed that the investment package is to ready its production lines for a second-generation Volt and two more, as yet unnamed, plug-in models. We'll wait with bated breath and bring you more news when we have it. With its highly popular Leaf electric car, Nissan is already seen by many as one of the greener automakers out there. But this week, Nissan showed just how green it really was with the announcement that it has been awarded the coveted Energy Star Partner of the Year Sustained Excellence Award for its attention to energy saving practices at its US car factories. Focusing on the Smyrna facility in Tennessee, where the Leaf is made and the Deherd plant where the car's powertrain is assembled, Nissan's special team of energy-saving engineers have collaboratively saved Nissan a massive 11,300 megawatts of energy. That's enough energy to power a Nissan Leaf expedition around the world 40,000 times. Nissan's elite team of energy-saving gurus managed this amazing feat by installing skylights to replace old fluorescent lights, installing a brand new paint booth, which is 30% more efficient than previous ones, and tracing air leaks on the miles and miles of compressed air tubing found in any car factory. Good job, Nissan. If you're one of those people who happens to be in a fairly senior position at your job, the chances are you may be lucky enough to have some form of car bundled in with your remuneration package. Depending on your job and industry, company cars tend to either be high mileage, fuel efficient models or large luxury German sedans. But for US businesses, there's now a new choice for the company car, a Tesla Model S. Announced this week, Tesla's new company car lease program takes all the pain and suffering out of arranging a zero emissions company car for your business or employees and is set up in a way as to be tax efficient and low stress as possible for the leasees. It even comes with a simply written lease contract that you digitally sign on vehicle handover by touching your new Model S's touchscreen display. Business leases start at just over $1,000 a month for the base model 60 kilowatt hour Model S, but Tesla says the true net cost for your business will be just $408 after you've taken into account all the savings you'll stand to make. Which leads us very nicely into the next story, Teslanomics or the art of making something appear really cheap on paper using some very clever maths. You see, Tesla prefers to advertise its cars using the net cost or effective cost calculation. But what happens if you apply the same Teslanomics to the cost of other plug-in cars? BMW i3 reservation holder Peda Norby tried to find out this week and did some rough back-of-the-napkin calculations. His conclusion? A base model BMW i3 doesn't cost you hundreds of dollars a month, it costs just 18. And a Nissan Leaf and Chevrolet Volt are so financially sound that you're essentially getting money for driving them. It's something we hadn't thought about before, and it really does illustrate how cheap electric cars can be to own. But will this form of Tazonomics catch on? I'm keen to find out. Have you ever heard of lemon laws? They're laws designed to protect car buyers and other consumers from products which consistently underperform, break down and fail to meet expectations. Generally, lemon laws are great because they give the buyer some protection if the thing they've purchased is, well, a lemon. On Monday this week, Vince Megner, self-proclaimed king of lemon laws, filed a complaint on behalf of a client against Tesla Motors for selling his client a car which he says is not fit for purpose. In the strangely scripted YouTube video where Megna details his client's claim, which includes a cut-up George Clooney, don't ask, Megna says his client is entitled to a full refund as the car has been in the shop for more than 30 days in the past year, with persistent fuse and door handle problems. In its own special way, Tesla was quick to rebut, with a post made on Wednesday refuting the claims. Tesla says it is continuing ongoing investigative work on the car, 
replacing major components even though it can't replicate any of the problems the claimant says he's had with the car. And in the case of those blown fuses, Tesla noted that replacing the affected fuses with tamper-proof ones seems to have strangely rectified the problem. He thinks this is going to be one to watch for some while. Last spring, the Finance, Housing and Resources Committee of the Highland Council in Scotland announced plans to install rapid charging stations for electric cars in several locations throughout its area, courtesy of a £150,000 grant from the Scottish Government. Yet, a year later, none of the proposed rapid charging stations have materialised. Only four public charging stations have been installed so far, and, say local electric vehicle owners, they're of the Type 2 7 kilowatt fast charge stations, which, while they're capable of charging most electric cars on the market today, take far, far longer to do so. What's more, the charging stations cost a total of £82,000 to install. So what happened? We did some digging this week, and it seems that the folks in charge of the Highland Council decided they couldn't install the quick charging stations in time before the end of the financial year. Instead, they decided to install the fast ones as a kind of a stopgap measure. As well as not fully understanding what electric car drivers need in a charging station, it seems the folks at the Highland Council have paid well over the odds for charging stations, although industry insiders tell us that costs can soon add up in remote areas where the charging stations are a long way from communications and power. It's all a bit of a shambles, really. So head over to www.transportevolve.com to get the full lowdown, because we don't have time to put it here. Talk about luxury British cars, and the chances are the name Bentley will come up in the conversation. Traditionally, Bentleys have always focused on luxury, opulence, and a never-wavering ability to retain decorum, even when travelling quickly. Not environmentally responsible motoring, per se. But this week, Bentley unveiled its concept hybrid, a plug-in variant of the Bentley Mulsanne sedan, which will be unveiled at the Beijing Auto Show later this month. Rumoured to feature the same 3-litre supercharged V6 and 70 kilowatt motor found in the Porsche Panamera SE hybrid plug-in, the Bentley will supposedly manage about 30 miles per charge in all-electric mode. However, it will also be about 70% less emissions than the current monster 6.75-litre gas-guzzling Mulsanne the luxury brand currently offers its discerning customers. There's no word on price either, but Bentley has hinted that it plans to make 90% of its cars available as a plug-in by 2020. Better teach Jeeves to plug in, eh? For the past 10 years, hybrid cars have been the number one way to get car buyers to get a greener car, and as a consequence, Toyota's Prius family of hybrids have experienced healthy sales, along with hybrids from car makers like Ford, Honda and GM. But sales figures from March suggested that hybrid cars, most noticeably the Prius, are starting to lose their green car sales crown to plug-in hybrids and all-electric cars. All versions of Toyota's iconic Prius, bar the plug-in, suffered a sales drop when compared to this time last year. These range from a 10% drop for the Prius C to a 30% drop for the Prius V. The Prius plug-in hybrid, however, had an increase of a touch over 40% in sales. This follows through to Ford 2, with the Ford C-Max Energy Plug-in Hybrid EV, PHEV, increasing sales by just over 40%. This puts the regular C-Max Hybrid to shame as it experienced a 53% drop in sales. The pattern duplicates with other cars where there's a hybrid and plug-in hybrid variant too. The hybrid loses out to the plug-in. Add this to increasing sales figures for the Nissan Leaf, and we think it's proof that plug-ins are the new green. Do you agree? Would you pay $800 for a half a bike? No. <laughs> It's not a trick or a hypothetical question, it's a real one. And the half bike, a cross between a unicycle and a skateboard, is real too. One of the latest projects to hit Kickstarter, the half bike does away with the complexities of a bicycle and is steered by leaning. To ride it, you adopt a motion similar to running, and frankly, it looks like great fun to ride. Plus, it's completely zero emissions as you're the power plant. But at $800? I think I'll pass. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEN. And in the meantime, visit www.transportevolve.com for all the EV news that's fit to print, subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube, and join us for our talk show later on today when we'll be discussing these stories and others on Transport Evolved. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield, and until next time, stay juiced up! When life gives you lemons, don't make lemonade. Make life take the lemons back. Get mad!